Hello there to all of our Broadway and Chicago followers. I'm Anna Lee with Broadway in Chicago, and we are joined today by Marcus. Hey. hey. Plays Jeannie in Aladdin. So, if you have any questions, go ahead, put them in the comments. We'll get to as many as possible. Um, and hey, we'll Chicago. Wait. You people start <laughs> trickling in here. Hello, yes. hello. We are joined today by Marcus Martin, who plays the Genie in Aladdin. So, if you have any questions for Marcus about Aladdin, about playing Genie, about life, put them in the comments. We'll get to as many as possible. We got some people tuning in. Hello. Um, welcome back to Chicago. Yes. Uh, there's so much to talk about specifically about your journey with Chicago because we were just chatting <laughs> and yeah. you were here a couple of years ago when mm -hmm. you were first auditioning for colleges. Yes. And now, and now you're back. Yes. Insane. And what is that feeling like? You know, you're auditioning for, for colleges and now you're on your national tour debut and you're here performing. Yeah, it's so special. It's such an amazing full circle moment and just... Uh, a testament to, you know, s uh, uh, how God can elevate you. It's just great. I, yeah, for, I was here. For those of you that do not know, um, there's this thing called Chicago Unified, so where all of the musical theater schools, uh, most of the musical theater schools, they come and you audition for all of them at the same time during the same week. And so, yeah, last time I was in Chicago was when I was 17, auditioning for colleges, hoping to have a future in this industry and in, in this business. So now to be back in this capacity, playing my dream role on the Broadway tour is, it's everything. It's a total dream come true. Um, it's its so special. We have a lot of students at ask us a lot when we do these interviews of like how did you know that college was the right path for you yeah um because in the performing arts the question of okay do i really need to go to college for for, for this what made you decide that this is the right choice for me yeah definitely i mean <clears throat> Obviously, take everything I'm about to say with a grain of salt, because your journey is your journey, so what worked for me may not work for you. Um, but yeah, I mean, for me personally, I needed, you know, I, 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 had, I had the raw talent as a kid, but I needed some of the packaging, I needed some of the polishing, um, and then also the, the connections that, that my school, Baldwin Wallace, shout out BWMT, um, that my school, BW, provided me. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of master classes with agents and casting directors, so by the time I graduated, I built a great network um, and, and had relationships with a lot of agents and casting directors, and you know, the agents that I ended up signing with, I met them my sophomore year of college. Um, and so, yeah, some of the other polishing around the gift, around the talent, um, and networking were, were things that, that I felt like I needed to take the, the steps that I wanted to take in this industry. So for, that's why college was the right choice for me. What piece of advice would, would you give to college students who are also just starting out in their yeah. musical theater pr professional journey? Um, because a lot of it, I feel, is like, you don't know what you don't know. You don't know what you don't know, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would say uh, just become a sponge. Become a sponge. Absorb everything. Uh, read the Broadway briefing every day. Read the Broadway grosses. Make sure you are, uh, make sure you get all the equity uh, emails so you know what's happening in the union, uh, that you're reading up on contract information. Just be, be a sponge. Absorb everything that you can. Um, get all the information that you can. And then uh, be willing to sacrifice. You know, sometimes greatness comes at a cost, and so you have to be able to sacrifice. And sometimes it isn't going to feel good. You know, you want to be like everybody else. You want to do what everybody else does. You, you know, you want to fit in. Uh, but sometimes if, if you want to achieve greatness and want to be called to greatness, sometimes there's a little bit of a standing out that's necessary. So embrace the standing out. Yeah. Well, while we're in your college years, uh -huh. I did a dive on your YouTube. Okay. All okay. right. Oh, boy. Oh, um, boy. Where are we going with this? We're going, we're going to YouTube, <laughs> and you had a, a little series, Monday Motivation. Oh, my goodness. Monday Motivation. <laughs> ah! um, yeah. For all those who are watching, go look up Marcus Martin on, on YouTube. He shares, he shares some great wisdom with us. Yeah. Um, and you were doing that for a couple of weeks, just sharing like one to two minute videos of like <sighs> things that you were going through your life and things that, that that you were learning in that moment. Yeah. Um, it is not Monday. It is thir Wednesday, Thursday. Uh -huh. Do you have a piece of Thursday motivation to share, specifically if there's something that, you know, you've been learning in this period of your life? Yes, actually. I would say um, 
you know, there's been a lot of really excitement around me making my national tour debut, and, and everyone is very excited for me. And but there, now there's been like a wow, you know, and this has also been a dream role of mine since I was a teenager. And so there's been a lot of you know, well, you've crossed this off the list. What's next? Which is amazing, and I think it's great to not get complacent and to always you know, celebrate them and to, you know, to always be looking forward to how you can continue to level up. Um, but give yourself the space to celebrate your accomplishments. I think you work hard for a reason. Um, and so when you accomplish something, you know, don't be in such a hurry to go to the next thing, right? Sit, don't rob yourself of the joy of being happy for yourself. You deserve to be happy for yourself. And I think in the age of social media, we're so into leveling up and leveling up and leveling up. And leveling up is great. You never want to be complacent. But you also deserve to celebrate what you've done. You deserve to celebrate your hard work. You deserve to celebrate yourself. Take it all in. Um, so don't rob yourself of the joy of celebrating yourself. Speaking of celebrating, celebrating, I mean, you are in a dream role. For yes. You, you yes. have been dreaming of, of, about this role in an in interview I heard you say since you were 16 years yeah. old. Yeah. When you first saw Aladdin, what specifically about the genie really was like, oh, you know what? That's going to be me one day. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I got to shout out James Merle Eichelhart, the original genie, Tony Award winning genie. Um, without the things that the amazing things he did with this character, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be here. Um, so shout out to him. Shout out to Michael James Scott, who was my first genie when I saw the show for the first time. Um, and, and they both have now become great mentors uh, uh, to me. They're amazing people. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think just seeing a role for somebody that that's my size. Um, be allowed to really take up space and live in the, you know, live in the fullness of the individual playing that character. You know, that's something that doesn't come around often for black men, specifically for black men that are my size. You know, I, I was told a lot um, that I would have a tough time in the industry, a tough time finding roles that I could sink my teeth in and that I could really shine in um, because we're often, unfortunately, limited to the sidekick, the nerdy friend, the whatever the case may be. And so to get to own the stage and, and own the audience and and, and be, uh, be funny but be sensitive and, and be happy but be sad and really live in the fullness uh, of who you are as an individual, it's it's a dream come true. It's, it's everything. Everything. I get to do everything in this character. Speaking of representation, yeah. um, with a little bit of what you said, and also in the interview, um, you say I resonated with, with it the the charisma and mm -hmm. the charm, and yeah. those were things that you were told to turn down in other settings. Yeah, and now you had permission to amp it up. Yes, yes. So in <laughs> in representation with your physical looks, but also your charisma. Yeah. What would you tell fellow actors who? resonate with that and, and, and feeling the same way and, and finding their space and breaking into that. Yeah, um, your gift will make room for you. Your, your, your gift, um, I keep going into the camera because I want to make sure that like it's, it's hitting who it's supposed to hit. Your gift will make room for you, right? Um, and so the things that you've been told that may be, that may be a liability for you or, or whatever, um, you know, things that others see as weakness, somebody else is going to see it as a strength. And where you're supposed to end up, you will, you will end up. Um, and, you know, God or whatever higher power you believe in. I personally believe in God, so I'll talk about God. But whatever you believe in, um, will, you know, the stars will align and, 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 and make a way for you to, to move into your purpose. Well, a really wonderful thing about this is, I'm going to quote you from another interview you said, yeah. the creative team really enabled you to make the role your own. Mm -hmm. They didn't pressure you to recreate what had been done before. Yeah. Um, noting the, the previous... Uh, efforts of James, who you just talk about, and Robin yeah. Williams as yeah. well. And yeah. so when you were making Genie your own, what were you pulling from? I was pulling from everywhere. Um, the joy, like I said, they, the the freedom that I had, knowing that I didn't have to be bound to anyone else's interpretation of Genie was amazing. Um, I went back a little bit to the original interpretation of the Genie. Fun fact. Um, before uh, uh, before the show hit Broadway, um, when it was still an animated film, the original concept for the genie was for that he'd be like a Fats Waller, um, Cab Calloway type of character. Um, and so I wanted to go back to those original roots. So I watched a lot of, you know, uh, uh, Cab Calloway videos. I listened to a lot of Fats Waller, read up on Fats Waller a little bit. I also watched a lot of old school stand up comedy. So I watched a lot of Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy, Red Fox, a lot of old school comedians 
um, just because to, to see the way that they work the crowd, right? The pacing, the crowd work, the engagement, um, that's something that's really important to the genie. Um, he's not he's not necessarily a stand-up comedian, but there are ways in the show that he kind of functions in that, in that way. Um, and so I really wanted to study up on the great comedians of, 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 uh, uh, of the past um, and, and their, how they master the craft of engaging a crowd. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I think what, what, what really makes the genie so engaging is that he's fun, yeah. right? But also, I mean, there's a bit of a deeper side to him yes. as well. And, yeah. um, you, uh, he, uh, in another interview, I'm going to pull from your quote, you say, mm -hmm. there, there's the flash, the glitz, the glamour, the comedy, but yeah. there's a human side to him as well. He yeah. struggles with his emotions and figuring out who he thinks the genie is. With that, what would you as Marcus uh -huh. want to tell genie? Oh, man. Um, that's a good one. That's, I haven't gotten that one. That, um, that you are enough. That you are enough. What you know to, to to take your own advice. Genie spends a lot of time trying to convince Aladdin in the show that who he is is enough, but meanwhile he doesn't realize it about himself. So just know that that who you are is enough, and you know, G Genie's gifts will make room for him too. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of of Genie's gifts, of yeah. course, you know he is the one who grants wishes. Yeah. And we have to know you as Marcus. Mm -hmm. If you could grant yourself a wish right now, would would you even want to? Um, no, honestly. I, I mean, I'm I couldn't be more thrilled with with my life at the moment. I mean, I have my dream job. It's a job I've dreamed of for so long. Um, getting to travel the country, play this amazing role, connect with audiences. My family is well in good health. I just got engaged to the woman of my dreams. Um, so yeah, it's, everything is going amazing. I, I want to change a thing. I want to change a thing. Well, we have to talk about just the stamina of this <laughs> role. Holy cow. Okay, so I saw the show mm -hmm. what, uh, yesterday, Matt. Matinee, and mm -hmm. although I, I, I didn't see you, Correct. the genie, yeah. holy cow, I was like, wow, this, yeah. especially a friend like me. And what Shout I, out to Jordan Spees, Jordan Spees, awesome. shout out to Jordan Spees, amazing standby, love you brother, amazing. He did shout wonderful, you yes. did so great. Yes. Um, and I read that while you were training for this role, that you sang friend, friend like me mm -hmm. while running on the treadmill. Uh-huh, yes, <laughs> so absolutely. what are some things that you're doing to, you know, keep yourself in check when you are doing this show? Because it's really yeah. a marathon for you. Yeah, it's tough. I always say, you know, whenever I do talkbacks or talk to students, I always say when you're an actor, the most important time of the day aren't, is not the two hours that you're doing the show. It's actually what you're doing the other 22 hours of the day to make sure that you can do a good show. Um, so it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's stretching. Um, stretching gradually throughout the day, um, doing warm-ups, uh, doing specific warm-ups that, that hit certain areas of your body that you have to use a lot, breathing exercises, um, drinking tea, hello, uh, room temperature water, all of the, you know, trying to stay away from dairy. I don't really do dairy during the week because it isn't good for your voice. Um, you know, using my, I have a massage gun that I use religiously. Um, so yeah, there's just a lot of maintenance, honestly. Maintenance is, that's half of your job, m more than half of your job. Most of your job as an actor doing a long running show is maintenance. Um, that, that you can deliver a show and, and maintain the integrity of the character uh, that was created every night. And when um, keeping yourself grounded on the road, you yeah. are making your national tour debut. Yes. Um, and I want to dip in because you just mentioned you recently got engaged. Yes, I did. Incredible. Yes. Um, Lydia, if you're watching, he's awesome. He's great. Love uh, you. Love you. <laughs> um, what are you learning specifically about, you know, maintaining a long distance relationship on the road? Yeah, great question. And what advice would you give fellow actors who might also, you know, be on the road and entering a relationship? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm young. I'm somewhat new to the industry, new to the maintaining tour life in, in a relationship. So I definitely don't claim to be an expert by any means. Um, but I would say um, putting in, putting in effort and, uh, communicating, you know, you know, so if, if it's a busy week, there's a lot happening, you know, I shoot her my schedule. Actually, I, I last night I texted her my itinerary for the day because we have this, you know, I'm like, yeah, leaving, leaving the hotel at 915. I've got all this stuff in the morning, blah, blah, on the show last night. So I'm like, hey, there's a little bit of what I've got going on, just so you know. 
Um, so yeah, just communicating and just putting in the effort. Um, it's really more sometimes when, you know, there's a lot going on in, in the week, it's more about quality over quantity. Um, so, you know, I'm, I may only have, you know, at the end of the day, 15, 20 minutes to give you on FaceTime, but I'm going to put in effort to make sure that it's the best 15, 20 minutes that I have. Um, so, yeah, I, I would say putting in the effort and communicating would be two things that I've learned. I don't know. Well, How'd I do? How'd I do, lady? I know you in there watching. How'd I do? You, you, let, let the people know. <laughs> <laughs> well, forward thinking. Um, yeah. In an interview, you mentioned that when you think of your career mm -hmm. many years from now, you say um, that you want to make an impact on the other side of the table yeah. as a producer. Yeah. And making the theater industry an equitable, an, an equitable space, yeah. an inclusive space. Mm -hmm. When you think of the, the landscape of theater five to ten years from now, yeah. what are you hoping you see? I'm hoping to see more body diversity. Um, I'm hoping to see more uh, financial transparency um, so that there is, yeah, I'm hoping to see financial transparency and body equity. I think there's there's so many things that can be different, um, but definitely, you know, body equity is, is, is body diversity, excuse me, is, is so important. Um, and we've seen over the last couple of years um, that there are, you know, amazing people that sometimes we that our industry puts limits on um, that should be that should be not put in, in a box. Um, so I want to see more of that, and I want to see more financial transparency. Um, I want to see a little bit more um, it's people getting treated better financially. You know, there are a lot of people at the you know bottom per se, um, that put in a lot of work to make these shows a success. Um, and so I want to see those people get their just due. Mm. Yeah. Well, to round out our time here, jumping back to Aladdin. Yeah. When, when folks come see this beautifully magical show, yes. it's so much fun. Yes. What do you hope folks walk away with, specifically after they watch your character of Jeannie go through sure. this adventure? Yeah, I, I think I hope that they learn that they I hope that they learn to remember that they're enough. I think we see in both Aladdin and Genie's journey they that they both have they both figure out that you know they don't have to put on a facade because who they've been created to be is enough, um, and what's going to be for them is for them. So I hope that people, you know, keep keep that same energy in their own lives. Um, yeah, so. Marcus, thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you all. For all those who are tuning in, um, if, 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 if you can't tell, we are at the Sox Stadium right now because yes. Marcus is singing the national anthem boom, boom, boom. for today's game. Yes. So we'll post a video of him singing the anthem. If you're going to the game, look out for Marcus. Come get on. get to your seat early. It's going to be so much fun. 12.58 um, p.m. 12.58 p.m. Don't miss it. But also... Aladdin is here. Aladdin's at the Cadillac Palace Theater until May 28th only. So it'll, just a, a two-week run. So you got to come. You got to get your tickets. We, we got $25 lottery, $49 rush. Yes. You won't want to miss it. Don't, don't miss Marcus and the rest of the really wonderful cast of Aladdin. It'll be a very magical, incredible time. Sure um, all that information and more at broadwayinchicago.com. Um, Marcus, how can people keep up with you on, on, on socials? What are your handles? Yeah, yeah my Instagram social is at MarcusM underscore 330. Uh, shout out Akron, Ohio. 330 is our area code. Always repping. Um, yeah, MarcusM underscore 330. You can keep up with me and all the shenanigans. Uh, I, I, I try to, because I was a theater nerd as a kid and I followed all the Broadway actors, I try to make the content that I, that I liked seeing when I was a 16-year-old theater lover. So, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, follow me. <laughs> well, there we go. Follow yeah. Marcus. Um, thank you all so much for tuning in, and we hope to see you at the theater soon. Bye, everyone. Bye.